Hi everybody, welcome to today's lecture. My name is Charles Agbani. Today we'll be looking at proportion. So in our previous lessons, we've looked at ratio and rate. So this is a continuation to that lesson, okay? If you want to see the previous lessons that we've done on rate and ratio, you can go to the playlist of my YouTube channel to see all three lessons. So the first thing we need to know is what is proportion? A proportion is an equation in which two ratios are set equal to each other. So the first thing we need to observe here is a proportion is an equation, okay? So we are equating two ratios, right? So in a proportion, we are equating two ratios. There are different types of proportion, which we are going to be looking at for the scope of this lesson. We'll be looking at direct proportion. The next one we'll look at is inverse proportion. And then the final one is joint proportion. For this particular video, our focus will be on direct proportion. In the next video, we're going to look at inverse proportion. And the last video, we're going to look at joint proportion. So at the end of each of these lessons, you are going to have an assignment to solve. If you are part of the WhatsApp group, all you need to do is do the assignment and send it to my assistant. But if you're not part of the WhatsApp group, you can just leave the answer to the question in the comment section. So we are focusing on direct proportion in this particular video. So let's look at direct proportion. In direct proportion, an increase in one ratio means an increase in the other ratio. For example, if one boy can transfer 50 kilograms of cement, two boys with the same strength can transfer 100 kilograms of cement. Five boys will transfer 250 kilograms of cement. This means that an increase in the number of boys means an increase in the amount of cement that can be transferred. That kind of relationship is called a direct proportion. So when one value increases, the other value also increases. So let's look at this situation here. We have C is directly proportional to N. This means as C increases, N is also going to increase, right? But for us to use this relationship to predict future occurrences, then we need to change this proportionality sign to an equal to sign. Once you change the proportionality sign to an equal to sign, you are going to introduce a constant here, okay? This constant is what relates this value to this other value. So when C changes from one to two, N is gonna change from two to four. So what makes the change to be constant is going to be dependent on K, okay? If there is no constant K, then you cannot have a proportional relationship. So K is the constant that helps you predict the value of N when C changes from one value to the other, okay? So K is called the constant of proportionality. So we're gonna use this to solve some examples. Let's do that. So in this example, we are told that if P is directly proportional to R, when R is equal to 12, P is equal to 10, okay? Now we are expected to find the relationship between P and R. We are also expected to find the value of R when P is equal to six. So what is the relationship between two ratios in a direct proportion? The relationship between two ratios in a direct proportion is what we call the constant of proportionality, which we have seen. K is what joins the two ratios. In this example, K is what joins P to R. So let's solve the question. We are told that P is directly proportional to R. So A, P is directly proportional to R. That is what we are told, right? So, but we cannot solve this way. We have to change the proportionality sign to an equal to sign. So we can say P is equal to, or since we've changed from proportionality sign to equal to sign, we are going to introduce K, which is the constant of proportionality. So K is K R, okay? Now we are told that when R is equal to 12, P is equal to 10. So we can have 10 is equal to 12 K. So remember, we are told to find the relationship. K is the relationship. K is what relates P and R together. So K is equal to 10 all over 12. 
we can simply say k is equal to 5 all over 6. So k is 5 all over 6. And k is a constant. That means k does not change. k is what we're going to use to find one value when the other one is known. So if one of the values, if p is missing, we can find p if we know r. If r is missing, we can find r when we know p. How do we find it? The relationship between them, the constant of proportionality. So here, we are told to find r when p is equal to 6. So b. We have p is equal to 6. So p is equal to 6. So the relationship is p is equal to kr. So 6 is equal to, we know that k is equal to 5 over 6. So 5 over 6 r. So here we can cross multiply. This numerator is going to multiply this denominator. Remember, 6 is the same thing as 6 over 1. So 6 is going to multiply 6 to give us 36. It's equal to 1 is going to multiply 5r to give us 5r. So to get the value of r, we divide both sides by 5. So we have 36 over 5. 5r all over 5. Okay. So 5 is going to cancel out 5. We have r is equal to 36 all over 5 or 7 whole number 1 over 5. So we've been able to find the value of r when we are given the value of p. Why were we able to find it? Because we know the relationship between p and r. We know the constant of proportionality. So this is a simple example on direct proportion. Let's look at a second example before I give the assignment for this particular lesson. So now let's look at the second example. We're told that the value of A is directly proportional to the square of B. When A is 3, B is 2. We're expected to find the relationship between A and B. And also we're expected to find A when B is equal to 3. Okay? So the first thing we need to write is the proportionality relationship. So A is directly proportional to square of B. Remember, A is not directly proportional to B. We are told that A is directly proportional to the square of B. So A is directly proportional to B square, right? Next, we remove the proportionality sign and put equal to sign. So A is equal to K B square. So we are told that when A is equal to three, B is equal to two. So we are going to put them here. So when a is equal to 3, we have b is equal to 2, so 2 square k. And we know that 2 square is equal to 4. So 3 is equal to 4k. So now we can divide both sides by 4 in order to get k. So that means k is equal to 3 all over 4. So the value of the constant of proportionality is 3 over 4. Therefore, we can write the relationship as a is equal to 3 over 4 b squared. So this is the actual relationship between A and B. A is equal to 3 over 4 b squared. That is the actual answer to this. Okay. So we missed that in the first example. We found the value of k, but we did not actually write the relationship. So the relationship is A is equal to 3 all over 4 b squared. So you can do the same thing for the first example. Okay. So now we're expected to find A when B is equal to 3. So knowing the value of B to be equal to 3, we're just going to fix in 3 where we have B and then find the value of A. So this is B. Sorry, this is A. So we have A is equal to 3 all over 4. B is 3, so 3 squared. And we know that 3 squared is equal to 9. So A is equal to 3 all over 4 multiplied by 9. 3 multiplied by 9 is going to give us 27. So A is equal to 27 all over 4. So you can leave the answer like this, or you can convert it to a mixed number, 6 whole number, 3 all over 4. So either way, that's the value of A. So it's very simple to find the relationship between two ratios. And also, when you get the relationship, which is the constant of proportionality, fixed into the equation, then you can find any of the two ratios when you know one of the other ratios, right? So it's very easy to solve questions using direct proportion. So I'm going to give you an assignment 
for this particular video. If you are part of the WhatsApp group, do the assignment and then send it to my assistant. But if you're not part of the WhatsApp group, just leave the answer to the assignment I'm about to write on the comment section of this video. Let's go. So this is the question you have to solve. So practice makes perfect, right? So try your best to solve the question. Then in the next lesson, we're going to look at inverse proportion. Okay, so see you in the next video. Don't forget to like the video, share with your friends, and also subscribe to this YouTube channel. Have a wonderful day. Bye.